Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. In today's video, we are going to study about uh, another force sensor or instrument for measurement of force, which is the column type load cell. So let's get started. Now before we discuss the column type load cell, we must first understand the definition or the idea behind a load cell. What is a load cell? A load cell is a mechanical instrument which is used for the measurement of slowly moving bodies such as slowly moving vehicles or any other any other object. So basically the load cell is uh, provided with a platform onto which the vehicle or the body whose, uh, the, whose weight is to be measured is admitted at slow speed or it has a mechanical support or a hook like thing from which the object could be hung so that we can uh, measure its weight. So either it can be a platform type or provided with a hook or mechanical support for uh, hanging the bodies for the measurement of weight. Now the load cells are of two types, column type load cell which we are going to discuss now and the proving ring type load cell which I will be uh, posting in another video. So today we are going to discuss, in this video we are going to discuss about the column type load cell. Okay, so let us uh, understand the design of a column type load cell. So the, the column type load cell as the name suggests, it is either in the form of a rod or column with a rectangular or circular cross section or it can be in the form of a cylinder. Okay, So basically it, it is in the form of a cylinder, so rod or cylinder. Okay, So its basic configuration is in the form of a cylinder which can either be compressed or stretched because of the applied force. Normally the compression type uh, load cells are used. So when force is applied it undergoes compression. Now how can we measure the force or the weight? For that purpose two pairs of strain gauges are placed. One along the axis of the cylinder and one along the circumference. The strain gauges measure the strain which is produced along the axis and along the circumference because of the applied force. Okay, so this is basically the configuration of a column type load cell. So basically it is in the form of a cylinder on a platform. Okay, the force is applied perpendicular to the cylinder. There are four strain gauges which are placed. This is placed along the circumference. These two strain gauges which are placed along the circumference and these two strain gauges are placed along the axis. So these two strain gauges, okay, these one, this one and this one, it measures axial strain, the strain which is produced along the axis. Whereas these two strain gauges, they measure the circumferential strain, the strain which is produced because uh, on the circumference, because of change in the circumference whenever there is compression because of the applied force. Okay, So now let us discuss the working of the column type load cell. So whenever a force or weight is applied on the load cell, it undergoes compression okay, along its axis and expansion along its circumference. So whenever any force will be applied, it, the cylinder will be compressed. As a result of that, it will expand along its circumference and compressed along its axis. Okay, Try to understand it from here. So here this is the cylindrical type load cell. Whenever any force is applied here, okay, any force is applied in this direction, it undergoes compression. Okay, It undergoes compression along the circumference, uh, sorry compression along its axis whereas expansion along its circumference. Okay? As a result of that, this strain gauge which is placed, which measures the axial strain, it undergoes compression 
and this strain gauge which is placed along the circumference to measure the circumferential strain it undergoes expansion because the circumference undergoes expansion while along the axis the load cell undergoes compression. So, these two strain gauges measure the axial strain and the circumferential strain respectively. Okay. Again try to understand this, this is the column type load cell which is placed on a platform any force or weight which is to be measured is applied perpendicularly in this direction. When any force is applied perpendicularly, the column type load cell it gets compressed. Okay. When it gets compressed, it expands along its uh, circumference which leads to an increase in the cross sectional area of the load cell. whereas there is a decrease in the length along its axis because of that. Okay. As a result of that, two strain gauges which are placed, okay. actually there are four strain gauges, but for the sake of understanding, I um, have shown here two. One is placed along the axis to measure the strain which is induced along the axis because of compression and one is placed along the circumference would get which uh, gets expanded because of the circumferential strain which is produced. So, these two strain gauges measure the axial and the circumferential strain. Now, it can be con uh, converted into suitable current or voltage signal with the help of a Wheatstone bridge. So, there are a total of four strain gauges. So, they can form four arms of a Wheatstone bridge. Okay. This is the signal conditioning using Wheatstone bridge, whereas there are four strain gauges which are connected as four arms of a Wheatstone bridge and the output is taken across the opposite end to the pair of ends across which the DC supply is connected, it is amplified and given to a display unit. Again make note that these four arms or these four resistances are actually the strain gauges which are placed. The four strain gauges which are placed. Now, if you want to know more about strain gauge, please check out my video which I have posted uh, in my YouTube channel related to strain gauge. You can get all the details about the construction and working of strain gauge. Okay. So, again the mathematical expression for the compressional and tensile strain which is induced along the axis and the circumference respectively are given by the compressional strain epsilon subscript c is given by force by a into e where a is the cross sectional area of the load cell and e is the young's modulus of elasticity f is the applied force and the tensile strain epsilon subscript t is given by minus mu f by a e where mu is the poisons ratio which is defined as the ratio between the lateral strain and the longitudinal strain multiplied with the force which is applied in newtons divided by the cross sectional area of the load cell and the Young's modulus of elasticity E. You can note down the values or the expressions if you want. So, this is the way the column type load cell actually functions. Let us have a quick uh, look at it. So, this is the column type load cell, the force is applied perpendicular to it. There are four strain gauges which are placed two along the circumference and two along the axis. Because of the applied force, this column cell, this column type load cell, it undergoes compression, it gets compressed. Because of that, there is a change in the cross sectional area, there is an increase in the cross sectional area and decrease in length. Okay. As a result of that, this strain gauge which is placed along the axis, it undergoes compression and this strain gauge which is placed along the circumference, it gets expanded and the strain which is produced on the strain gauges are converted into current and voltage signal with the help of a Wheatstone bridge, where four resistances uh, actually they uh, signify the four strain gauges which are
connected two along the axis and two along the circumference okay so these are the mathematical expression for compressional and tensile strength so this is the basic concept related to the measurement of force with the help of a column type load cell so uh, in the upcoming days i am going to post the other proving ring type load cell for force measurement and many other videos related to sensors and transducers and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics and instrumentation engineering have a great day thank you very much